Hey everyone, it's World Film Geek, and I interviewed Mika Borum, the former child star actress who has been in films like Along Came a Spider, The Initiation of Sarah, and Sleepover makes her directorial debut on Hollywood.com, a part adventure film and part look at the seedy side of Hollywood fame that's now out on Amazon Prime. Enjoy the interview. Oh my goodness. All right, there we go. I got to say, I am honored to be talking with you. I've watched some of your earlier films, Along Came a Spider, The Initiation of Sarah. I mean, just to get to talk to you, a former child star, is just, I feel like it's an honor and a privilege. And I am so excited because I saw your movie this morning, Hollywood.com, and it was so much fun to watch. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much. It's so kind of you to say. Cool. So how did this come about? Because I found like you and your dad co-wrote the film, but what brought the idea on to do this and make this your directorial debut? You know, so it was interesting. So I've been acting since I was seven and I've always been on set asking 101 questions about everyone's job. What do you do? How do you do that? Um, you know, why, why? And so I think directing was sort of a natural progression. And um, as I got older, um it was something that i felt really really just drawn to do because i love the idea of being involved with something uh well actually even more than directing this so i yeah i wrote it um i acted it i direct it i produced it i cast it like the whole the whole boogie and so um i just like was so drawn to the idea of being involved with something from the inception and then taking it all the way through distribution and getting it, you know, to the audiences. And so um, I was really excited about that being like, you know, this sort of culminative like endeavor to put together, um, you know, coming from acting where you just show up and you're a piece of this amazing puzzle, but to really like get in there, you know, in depth and like help organize and conceptualize and like do the whole puzzle. So that was really cool. But so for this specific project, it was funny. It was really funny because, um, it's so ambitious for an independent like you know most yeah. people, <laughs> most, oh, people know. Yeah, most people with an independent um which makes a lot of sense they'll you know grab a few actors you put them in a room you create some sort of interesting you know relationship or conflict and then you have them like talk it out or whatever um and they're in one space so for this project i don't know why but i had it in me that i just like wanted to do something that um you know was like a big landscape um with all these locations and um i really really wanted to work with great actors and work with a lot of great actors and so i saw um it as this wonderful opportunity to reach out to friends that i had worked with in the past that were colleagues and to bring them on board and so when i started um feeling out the interest of um you know what friends i could snag and throw in the movie and there were a lot of them and i was like this yeah. is so cool yeah i like got excited and i was like all right ensemble piece adventure piece and um so that kind of like started leading me down that road and then i started thinking like okay so i want this to be fun um what is like funny quirky things that i personally because they say write what you know so yeah. what do i have that's kind of like funny and quirky to pull from and from my experience of being on all these sets, I've got, you know, these 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 funny um, people, you know, in Hollywood that you sometimes run across. Not everyone's like that, but you know, the um, the 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 movers, the shakers, the ladder climbers, the the con artists, the this, the that, the Dreamer, um, uh, name dropping, yeah, yeah, all of that. So I was like, that'll be really fun. I'm gonna throw that in because I know it and I can do it well, and I can do it authentically. Um, so that's how the Hollywood side kind of developed on it. And then beyond that, though, I wanted to like open it up and I said, okay, so we have that, but then I want to add something, um, you know, with like a lot of like equal, equal as much um, flavor, like something colorful and fun. And so I started thinking about um, like the, all the Latin America stuff. And um, so <clears throat> my dad is a gemologist. And so he uh, works with these gemstones. And so he spends a lot of time in Latin America and specifically in Guatemala. And Guatemala has amazing jade. And I'd actually been with him before on a jade buying trip. 
And um, when I went with him to Guatemala, it was a long time ago, and he was looking to find Jade and we drove all across the country and we ended up like back in this little village and um, everyone was kind of like looking at us. And then they came out and they had these amazing, like bright green, beautiful pieces of Jade, but they had pulled them from tombs. Oh, wow. <laughs> Yeah, they had pulled them from tubes. So we were like, well, oh, no, no, we don't need the tube one. Um, but that's where the, the Mayan curse Jade comes in and the folklore in the film. And um, because my dad does work down there, like in terms of th making things like realistic and authentic, it made it easier to pull from that too. So I just kind of combined these two worlds where I knew that we could get some genuine character and texture from each. Mm -hmm. um to put them together because i think it's important to um i think it's important to have like real aspects in things so that you know even if it's like a comedy and it's meant to be goofy and like whatever but still there's like you know real things that um that make it so that people you know do live in latin america or they do something with stones or they do like work in hollywood or whatever they're like like it strikes them you know they're like oh exactly. oh i recognize that oh that's it's funny awesome. or like oh i've experienced that before so. Yeah, that's awesome that you combined basically your two real worlds and meshed them into this. You don't really get that. You know, you always get like the one straight out story, but I did like that juxtaposition in between the adventure you had and while, and then you got the smarmy people in the Hollywood, you know, the good producers and then the manipulators, you know, I, yeah. I loved it. That's what I loved. And you mentioned the ensemble cast and I loved it. Um, I almost didn't recognize Devin Rattray from Home Alone. Like he, he that I was like he hasn't changed a bit. He you know he's I didn't recognize him with the uh, you know but he he was he was hilarious. When I he love getting, him when he was getting tickled and he's like no that tickles that tickles I just like cracked up and Tom Arnold was hilarious as the the cartel leader because that was that was so unexpected and his son just comes in and tries to marry you I, I thought that was hilarious I mean that was they must have had a blast working with you on that on this on this film. Yeah, we had fun. We really had a good time. Um, you know, because my background is in acting, like the most or one of the most important things to me was to build out these weird characters that would be really fun for them to play. So we took time before we ever started shooting and like really developed who they were, what they liked, what they didn't like, what their character arc would be. And then we tried to piece into like, even with the villains and, and, and the people who are supposed to be bad, there's still like a little bit of heart or like they have a little bit of like retribution or a little bit of redemption, you know? Yeah. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so it was really enjoyable to, to work with the actors on it. And they're, they're my buds too. So like Tom Arnold played my dad um, on this TV show on the WB called The Tom Show when I was 10. I remember that, yeah. I grew up yeah. with that. so I, yeah, I totally grew up, yeah, I grew up in that, in that era, the whole Home Alone era, I grew up during then, so I, I knew exactly what, remember that show vividly, but I love, um, you know, I saw that your dad co-wrote it with you, I'm guessing he took the adventure part of it, considering his background, I'm guessing he did, mo he wrote probably most of that stuff, was that true? Yeah, he had a lot of great ideas for the adventure stuff, absolutely, absolutely, he, um, he's a pilot, uh, He's a bush pilot. He's a helicopter pilot. He has his commercial license. He does the gemology stuff. So he's he loves like being out there in the jungle and doing all of that. Um, he produced it as well. He enjoyed producing it uh, because there was a lot of um, you know like haggling like with the locations or if things went wrong last minute like trying to like like you know quickly finesse things and get them back in. We were having um, a funny part of the film was we were having a um, we were having a hard time with our wedding location. Mm -hmm. And so um, we were in Texas, we were in Kerrville and we're trying to figure out, cause we shot the, we actually shot Tom Arnold's part for the wedding separately. Mm -hmm. And then we shot the, all of the um, uh, guests as a, as a separate piece. And so we're trying to figure out the location and we had a few things fall through and we're like, oh my gosh, like, what are we gonna do? We have limited time here in Texas and with these actors and this and that. And so we were eating at this restaurant and my dad started speaking to the restaurant owner and uh, the restaurant owner was like, yeah, you want to throw a wedding here? <laughs> How about tomorrow? <laughs> I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like sitting there. It's like, it's like seven o'clock at night. I'm like, what? I'm like, we need guests. We need wedding guests. And he's like, 
uh, well, most of my people who work at this restaurant are like zombies, so you can use them as some of the guests. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, they're like uh, okay. And then I was trying to figure out, it's really funny too, um, Kerrville, Texas is a wonderful place. It's sort of West Texas. And so I was trying to figure out um, about getting more um, guests for this for the zombie wedding. And so I thought, well, I'll call up the local theater. And so I called up what I thought was the local theater. And this woman answers the phone and she's like, she's like, hello. And I'm like, hi, you know, I need people for to be wedding guests for this movie tomorrow. <laughs> Hurry, quick, come out. And uh, she was like, I started to get this odd vibe. And I was like, this is not, this is not a theater. And I'm like, is what 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 number did I call? What is this? She's like, this is the local Dairy Queen, and I would love to come down. <laughs> now, can I bring my husband and my cousins too? And I was like, absolutely, please, please do. <laughs> and so they all came out, and they they were amazing. And we had you know hair and makeup and wardrobe there for them, got them all painted up. But um, it was funny, like you know, filming That's an independent movie. Fault. Yeah, you have you have some fault. wild experiences like that. That's awesome. Oh my god, that's crazy. So that, for the adventure parts, aside from the real life experiences, were you influenced by some of those adventure flicks like um, Romancing the Stone, Jewel of the Nile, or even The Crocodile Hunter, or you know those type? Were you influenced a little bit by those shows as well? Absolutely, absolutely. Romancing the Stone is um, you know a huge influence on this movie. That's I, I just adore that movie. Um, I think that they take you on a wonderful adventure. I think you meet a lot of weird characters. And um, that's what this was all about. You know, is you just, you go on an adventure, you get to see these grandscapes um, and you get to kind of like relax into these random worlds that you may not necessarily be invited to in your, in your life. And so you get to just go along with the, with the flow and, and hopefully, you know, um, buy into, into the heart of, and like the mission of these different characters. And I think, you know, so Romancing the Stone, I definitely get that out of that movie. Indiana Jones, like I get that too. Um, you know, you, you get to see cool caves and like temples and, you know, um, a little bit of mystique, a little bit of curse. So I liked adding all of that in there. Um, it was funny because <laughs> it was funny because I, I just adore romance in the stone. And so I was using that as a reference for people for the film and there were a couple of people who got confused because Romancing the Stone has that love angle to it, the love right. story. And that's what I loved about the film. Like you didn't have you didn't have to go that route and you didn't. I'm glad that it was more of a father daughter coming together type of thing. I, that's what I really loved about the film as well. Thank you. Thank you. Didn't you. Have to go, you didn't have to go. Yeah, because most of the, you see those type of films are most like, oh, yeah, we got to have a love interest for the character. I'm like, I'm thinking not all the time. No, you don't. Yeah, like, not all the time. Oh, you know, I think that sometimes you can just. It's okay to do something different. That's what I like about indie films. You guys, it's more original than, you know, the same old thing over and over again. And you, I like that you did that. You went that route with the father-daughter thing. We're pushing the envelope, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you know, exploring different things. I think that that's the cool thing about independent film is that um, you, it, because, you know, it's a lot, it's a lot of work because you have to do all these different things. But at the same time, you get to sort of push the envelope and explore different things um that aren't so formula based that you would be locked into in a regular movie and i think that that's kind of fun because i think that you know you can hit these cool weird quirky gemstones that you ne you wouldn't necessarily get um in in a traditional um big production film um you know that has big studio heads that are like well i don't know if everyone will like that or i don't know you know or let's make this more like you know well we need the we need you know we need the we need the love story because this movie we have no um we have, uh, you know, no major violence in it. There's no sex scenes. There's nothing religious. There's nothing political. There's, you know, it's it's just goofy, goofy yeah. fun. I, yeah, I felt like it was a, it was part part adventure, part satire on the Hollywood system. That's what I thought. That's what I thought of the film. Like it yeah, was a combination, exactly. and it worked. And it, I, for me, I think it worked. I think, I, I totally think it worked. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, it's so funny. Okay, so this is funny, circling back a little bit. So I was referencing the movie being like Romance in the Stone to people. And I remember it was, this, it was so cute. As one little woman turned to me and she was like, I love that movie. She's like, but it's a father-daughter, like Romancing the Stone. And I was like, no, 
No. Oh. So then I stopped her using it as reference. I was like, it's not a father daughter adventure love story. I was like, my gosh, now my dad is from Arkansas, but no. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Yeah, it was so funny. Yeah, that's crazy. Like, father daughter. Oh, no. I know. I know. Oh. I was like, I was like, where did where did you even get that from? Yeah, you can't even say Jewel and Nile anymore because they're going to think the same thing because that's that was the pretty much the sequel to Romance in the Stone. So it's like you can't use that either. Yeah, yeah, and then um, and then we had a little bit of an influence too for the film um, Forget Shorty, oh. where it's like making the movie within the movie. Yeah. Yeah, so we had a little bit of that influence, and um, and I was trying to think too, you know, when we put the film together, I was like, how do we want to wrap this up? And I kind of you know i loved that at the at the end of get shorty where is this like sort of you know open-ended like you know things have come together but they're still they're still carrying on and this world still exists yeah you never know what's gonna happen yeah the one character i couldn't stand so much was the bff because as you were trying to talk to her she's getting more into herself and then she kind of she pretty much screwed you out of that the zombie movie like, i know oh, so wrong but i like how her story ended up i'm like yes this is exactly what i was hoping would happen our karma <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes. yeah no it's so funny so i mean um like that character that's totally that's totally you know i've met those characters before where they're like oh my gosh thank you the best <laughs> you're the best you're so amazing now uh if you could just give me that information <laughs> yeah, right. tell me tell me exactly where i could pick up uh that job and that money or whatever like bring that this way and uh we'll see like yeah, that's so wrong oh my god that, those are not real friends <laughs> yeah there's a lot of that we get a lot of those in hollywood yeah I, I, I can imagine so finally is there any after this movie is there anything new that you're coming out with or going to be working on that we can talk that you can talk about Oh my gosh, so many exciting things. So one really exciting thing that I want to mention is um, it just came through yesterday. So um, during the pandemic, I was I was actually able to keep working, which was so cool. So thankful for that. And I did a music video for this artist, Travis Tidwell, um, mm -hmm. and it's called Catch Me If You Can. And um, he comes from Dolly Parton's management group. And so he uh, the music video was just nominated um, at the Josie Awards, which are the biggest independent music awards for music video of the year. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So that's super exciting. I'm like Ooh. so pumped about it. Mm -hmm. And so that'll be those awards are in uh, September. So we'll see. So um, but yeah, that just happened yesterday. Josie Awards. But um, it's a fun music video. You should check it out. We filmed it in Arkansas. It's Southern, it's Southern Rock. Um, there's like really cool like barn scenes and it's got a lot of character and texture in it too um so yeah so there's that and then there's a um country music um like documentary that i'm putting together so we're just figuring out you know it's an interesting time right now still with uh scheduling with people with the with the pandemic and then there's a series of um children's films that i'm going to do oh, and wow. so those would be like educational children's films like i conceptualized um a series of them and so that's exciting but that you know still like with the pandemic and then there's one other project um actually two other projects um there's another one which is a really cool um large-scale historical piece that's about a young boy who and it's based off of a real story he travels across the united states in the 1920s and he jumps trains and he rides the trains into these different areas and um in these different places he meets people and has these beautiful coming of age experiences. So like one of the places he goes to is sort of like Mice and Men where there's like a, a Lenny type character and he befriends him. And then, wow. yeah, it's it's a it's a great, great cool. story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that kind of reminds you of uh, this IMAX movie I watched like years ago when I was in high school. And it was about an immigrant kid who ex comes to New York City and he has all these experiences with the different cultures around where, you know, around the city because I'm from I'm from New York originally I'm living in, I live in Florida now but I'm originally from New York so I know all about the whole melting pot and this kid experiences it I think he came, he came from like Russia it's sort of similar to that but that's pretty cool that he goes to diff these different periods with I think that's that's a really good idea yeah he starts in California and then he heads to the south mm -hmm. and then he heads all the way back so you know just during that time period too um all the different things that you'd be exposed to not only as like a young man but just you know regionally going into these different areas um 
So I'm super excited about that one. That's definitely like a, a, a larger project because, you know, you got trains, yeah. you've got kids on trains, you've got the historical outfits, um, you know, the historical sets, all of that. So, um, but it's just such a beautiful piece that I, that I have to do it. Um, and then there's, and then there's another one too, that I've been working on, which is fun. There's another one. The other one is a, um, and this one I filmed part of two more, more recently. And it's, um, did you ever see Brick with Joseph Gordon-Levitt, the, um, the Ryan Johnson film? No, I haven't seen that yet. It's on my list. Oh, check it out. Yeah, it's, it's, um, so it's sort of a, um, modern detective film. And so, um, (laughs) I've been tinkering on something that has influence with like influence from that, um, Mm -hmm. where you use the sort of Humphrey Bogart language and the, um, you know, the really kind of, uh, interesting shadows and the different camera work with the really wide lenses or the super tight close-ups. And so we've been playing that with that to develop a style, um, to do a film that would be sort of like a, like a modern, modern detective, um, modern detective story. So I, I've had a blast to like, you know, watching the old Humphrey Bogart movies and stuff and just, um, How's it going? It's my haunt. <laughs> huh? I was doing the Humphrey Bogart. How's it going? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love it. So good. Him and Lauren Bacall. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I love, I love the classics and you know, I love Casablanca and the Maltese Falcon. I love those types of movies too. Yeah. Those are, like so my, I think, yeah. Those are like my mood movies. Those are ones like, you know, if I'm in the mood, watch it, I'll, I'm going to watch it. <laughs> I see you've got a large collection back there. I love that. That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. I'm all, yep. I like, I'm totally into all types of movies, basically. So, yeah, it's, yeah, it's my collection. I just, yeah, I've been collecting for the last couple of years mainly. So, I, I have everything like Bergman, you know, old school Warner Brothers, you know, martial arts, Hong Kong movies, Japanese. Yeah, I got, I got like so many. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. I love that. There's something too about having like a hard copy of stuff. Yeah, I think it's so nice, you know, compared to just having the digital copy online. There's something about like, or just, or just watching streaming all the time. Yeah, I was like, I gotta have the hard, I gotta have the, the physical copies of. I so miss the um, experience of like going into a blockbuster and being able to like, you know, touch all the movies and look at them and look at the artwork and like, I just yeah, miss you, that. You should see my bedroom closet then because I have all VHS tapes in there. Oh, nice. <laughs> I actually nice. have a VCR that works, <laughs> so it's perfect. Nice. I have, to, was, I have to go old school now and again. That's the best way to go. It was funny. Did you see um, during the pandemic, like VCRs became like a really like big hot ticket. I saw on eBay, they were selling one for like, I like, oh my gosh, I think for like $800 or something like. And yeah, I got mine for seven bucks at a Goodwill store. So it's Oh like, man. <laughs> so, and it's still, I got it like two years ago. And it still works. Nice. I'll watch, I'll watch, I'll pop in a March brothers or some of the old 80s stuff I grew up with, like Three Amigos and The Gods Must Be Crazy, those type of movies. I, I just love it. It's just, I love that nostalgia feeling. I still miss it. I I actually really enjoy the way that the VCR um, videos look also. There's something too about, you know, um, about the way that they come up on screen, which yeah. is so interesting. You know, and it's, it's a thing now too, um, with so many of these, these films, um, you know, it's funny because they come out so crisp and then we spend so much time like putting the film layers over top of them to sort of bring them back down to either film or like more to like the, you know, the Grind- VCR type. Look. Yeah, the grindy house, you know, the little tracking thing on it. Yeah, I, I, that's what I love. Whenever I see something like that, I, I totally miss it. I'm like, oh man, I remember growing up with this. I wish my kids can see this. Well, they do because they've seen, I showed them, I showed them the VHS tape and they're like, what's that? And I'm like, this is a VHS tape. That's a VCR. This is how it works. I put it in front of it. And then, then they were like, whoa. <laughs> of, course of course, they're they're in the streaming age. So, you know, you know how that goes. Yeah, so they're probably like, why you rewind it? Why would you rewind it? <laughs> like, that's exactly. too funny. Exactly. Yeah, it's too funny. The um, It was interesting. We tried to, um, so the aesthetics for Hollywood.com, we have like everything that's in Hollywood is really, um, we went back to, um, like with the color correction, we did everything with like really strong, like um, blue tones and black tones, um, made everything really cool. And then everything in Latin America is more saturated and um, with the reds and the and the oranges um, and more warm tones. So that way, visually, as you're watching it, 
like on a subconscious level, since the story goes back and forth between the two, you can immediately recognize where you are. And it was interesting with that too, because um, a lot of that comes into um, the actual production design too. You know, because like if you want to pop those blue tones, then you need to make sure that you're including in the in the outfits and then the the backgrounds and the um, you know the furniture and everything else things that have those blue tones that can be picked up and then vice versa for the for Latin America stuff you have to make sure that you have enough reds and oranges and stuff to actually be able to pull it up and have it look correctly. So we spent we spent a lot of time putting that together and thinking about that too. So it was fun. There's there's so many like little. Um, specific artesian things that we tried to to do with the piece to make it special i don't know if you noticed um but it's really fun for me um we have a couple of songs from billy bob thornton in there with his band the box masters yeah i saw that it's, it's yeah. awesome that they were in the movie I, that blew me away i was like whoa wait a minute i'm like that's awesome yeah it's so fun and um i just adore that song the glendale song yeah and yeah have you been to glendale no i I haven't been to the West Coast yet, man. That's, that's like, that's still on my, like, dream. Like, I got to go out to the West Coast. I've only been to the, I've only been to the East Coast. I've been to the Midwest and I've been to Puerto Rico because that's where my family's from. But I haven't, I haven't been out there in the West Coast yet. That's still on my hopefully five-year plan. <laughs> well, when you make it to Glendale, you got to turn on the Box Masters Glendale song because it's so funny. And it's so on point where they're like, we're not quite as cool as Hollywood. We, um, uh, we're pale. Uh, they talk about like, they can see um, like the, the pollution on the mountains. <laughs> like it's just funny because it's, it's so, so on point. Um, but yeah, now it was cool that they gave us a few songs and then they had that cameo in there. So, yes. I, you know, there's just these like really, really fun, um, random quirky Easter eggs throughout. Did you see Brian Krause? Yes. And I actually interviewed him two years ago for the demonologist and he was so much fun to talk to. So when I saw him in the movie, I'm like, Oh snap. <laughs> like he's it, he's right there. That's awesome. I love Brian. He's great. So it's funny. Cause you know, same thing with Brian. I'm like, Brian, like you gotta come do my movie. Like, you know, it's going to be fun, be quirky, weird characters. I was like, all right, so you're going to play the director. So I want you to come in. And we had so, so much fun funny stuff from him and we just didn't have time to fit it all in especially because the beginning of the movie you're trying to get the pacing going you're trying to get like yeah. people into the story so we couldn't hang there with him as long as I wanted to but he's so funny because I was like I want you to like I want you to do all of the like weird things that people ask you to do in auditions and like just throw it at these actors you know so he's like he's like all right I want you to be up I want you to be down so you know perform it outward with a lot of energy but keep it inside and contained <laughs> you know uh and so um yeah and then he had like the apple too i can't remember if he kept the apple stuff in but he was like eating an apple and then he like throws the apple at the actors he's like jump <laughs> your mom and then like he'll say stuff to you like your dog just died cry <laughs> <laughs> yeah he was so so funny um i've got to do a behind the scenes extras to include some of that stuff because like oh, totally. he just like went off um and did amazing improv on it and then like tom too tom arnold like his stuff oh my gosh he did so much improv too that we also had to like reel some of it back just for the sake of like pacing for the movie but like he just like went off and it was fun with the film too so when i was about done um one of my good friends is the editor um kevin rossi's editor for stranger things mm -hmm. and californication um and so and well, she's won some emmys um too which is so awesome for his editing work and so i had him do a polish on the film um to look at the pacing and all of the stuff and so there was some stuff where i was like wait but i just want to hang in this beat forever like i just love the actors they're so funny they just like spiel off and he's like nope we gotta keep going we gotta keep going pacing i'm like okay all right that's a guy that's an idea though put their stuff as like extras yeah like like gag like a gag reel or something like in since they did separate you know brian Krause gag reel tom arnold gag reel just put those out there that'd be hilarious yeah, I've got to. I've got to. It'd be so funny. It'd be so funny. And yeah. That's awesome. That's, man. Yeah, so it sounds like you had a lot of fun on the, making this movie. Absolutely. We had a blast with it. It was funny, though, because halfway through, I was like, 
whose idea was it to do a movie with so many actors in so many locations, <laughs> like all these moving parts and we don't have like a huge crew to like organize all these moving parts because I had to do organizing, you know, people and their schedules and stuff too. And I was like, oh, it was your idea. <laughs> like, <laughs> no one to blame on this. So, um, but it was nice that I was able to, um, you know, have my dad with me on it. So, you know, for problem solving and stuff, it was, it was nice to have like a real solid team member, you know, that you can count on. And that's like, we're going to do this, and, you know, you know, we have to, um, see it all the way through the end, you know, yeah. um, one of our funnier things too, that happened on the project, we were filming that airplane crash scene. Mm -hmm. And so when we were filming the airplane crash scene, we filmed out in, um, we filmed out in a field in Texas at like 3 AM. Um, and, uh, it was funny because we were out there and we had this like machine set up that was supposed to do turbulence for the airplane, but it wasn't quite working right. And it was like too much or too little. And it was just, it was just a lot going on. And so we couldn't get the correct shots and it was freezing. And, um, you know, we had like all the fake rain and stuff too. So people were wet and cold. And so, um, we put together a seesaw at the back because it was a tail dragger plane. So it had the wheel at the back. And so we, we put a seesaw on the back of it um, because we figured out we could get better turbulence with that. But it was really funny because the only people that were the proper height and weight for the seesaw uh, was me and the Mayan priest. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so in between us filming or doing stuff or in between me directing, I had to get back on the seesaw that had the back of the plane with the back of the wheel under it and like sit back there. So we have really funny pictures and videos of that too, of just like 3 a.m. trying to make turbulence. It's cold. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But we got it done. Yeah, it's it's typical any film. It didn't have its it didn't have its it has problems, but then in the end, you just you succeeded. And man, I I hope everyone gets to see this movie. And I know right now it's on Amazon Prime, so people need to go check this out, especially if they're fans of yours from the old school days or because this is this was an amazing project and i cannot to wait to see what you got coming up next with everything you just talked about and we definitely got to keep in touch after this this was so much fun i cannot wait to see what's next from you and everyone needs to go see hollywood.com asap because it was such a wild and fun film so mika you are so awesome it's been a pleasure talking to you and I can't wait to see what's next from you. Thank you so much. This was awesome. Thank you. Thank you. I'll talk to you soon. I'm, I'm yeah, so definitely. excited that you, you know, had a great time with the film and spent time with it. It means a lot. After all the hard work, it's the most rewarding thing to, to get it in front of people. Um, so thank you. Awesome. Oh, let's keep in touch because this is awesome. All right, you take care and uh, yeah, good luck. Cool. Sounds good. All right. Bye-bye. Thanks so much. Bye.